There we go. So you know that um, maybe about three weeks ago, um, Basil Miller, we've heard us speak about him, the huge mega whale hustler out of the Bahamas. Um, some of his family reached out to us. Yes. Going to actually be catching up with them shortly. And um, they sent us, um, we'll get hopefully a lot more of it, but some archival newspaper footage from covering um, Mr. B. You guys yeah, have heard it early on. Yeah. We referred to him as Mr. Q. I was trying to kind of keep the anonymity, but as this thing grew bigger and bigger, yeah, um, cats the, out the bag. The cats baby. out the fag that out the bag that um, Mr. Q was Mr. B, and that Mr. B is Basil Miller. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. Rest um, in peace. Yeah, big time. And he sent us a newspaper clipping. So just for again the backstory, though, for you guys who don't know, uh, once my pops got out of the Fed joint from that um, original one, that's Brother Tatum. We just shot some good stuff with um, with Brother Ray. Hey, Ray, we still taping, brother. I'll hit you back. I'll hit you back. Um, shout out to Ray Tatum getting off Zero Atlanta. Uh, got some great content we just did with him. But so, um, come 84, Pops has come home from the Fed joint. He's done his time from the original indictment with Eddie and the 32-man indictment, you know, during the grand hustle of the 70s. Right. While he's in the Atlanta federal penitentiary, he meets a gentleman by the name of Basil Miller. Basil Miller is from the Bahamas, and what I did not know until this article, he had actually been sentenced to 45 years. He would not do 45 years. <laughs> he was exceptionally well was connected. A lot of interest to, to to keep that from happening. Yeah, there were a lot, a lot, a lot of interest to keep that from happening. Um, Basil was obviously a big shot, you know, when the Fed joins like almost college. Everybody knows everybody's resume and where they went to, what they've accomplished and mm-hmm. things of like that. And Basil knew the members of the Gambino family that Pops knew from working for Eddie. Um, so Pops and Basil form a relationship. They keep in touch. So this is like circa 82-ish, 81, 82-ish. Pops gets down to Atlanta in 77, so... I guess he meets Basil in 77 because Basil gets arrested August 17th, 1974. Right. So basically three years later, he's going to be, he's already at Atlanta when Pop gets to Atlanta Federal Penitentiary. Mm -hmm. Um, They see that he sees he's a big whale. You know, they always laugh. The only, only blacks that could sit at the table with the Italians where it was uh, Mr. B and Pops. And, and your dad. Yeah, they'd be like, yeah, you need special niggas. Huh? Y'all, why them Italians look, talk to y'all, let y'all eat with them, you know? Uh, and Pops would be like, they talk crazy about Basil, but never to his face. Oh, no. <laughs> <He'd be> like, <laughs> they'd call him funny style and everything else, but never to his face. So, uh, Mr. B, Basil and Pops, form relationship, get really, really cool during their time in Atlanta, exchange information. Um, fast forward, Pops gets out in 84. He's still doing some things with the Westies okay. and that crew. When that situation ends about, I guess Basil must have come home in 85-ish or right in there. Mm-hmm. Um, he gets the phone call from his man saying, I'm back home. I'm back in the island. I got my thing back reestablished. Um, why don't you come down here and holler at me? Right. And I'll never forget. So Pops is telling me about his man that he did time with that's in the Bahamas. And he's going to, and now Pops, you know, in his day, boy, hell of a guy. He is still on parole. Okay. So needless to say, he's not supposed to be leaving the country to go speak to, um, he's not supposed to speak to any other felons. But of course, everybody he knows is a felon. So, <laughs> um, he's like, I'm gonna go down here, Junior. I'm gonna go down to the Bahamas and just see what my man talking about. Mm-hmm. So that's like on a Friday, Lou. Okay. Um, he's staying at Mister Moore's suite there on uh, Six Mile in the building. Okay. So he leaves like on a Friday. 
I'll never forget. I come back home. I mean, I come back to see, I think, because he, he told me he was coming back on Monday. Mm-hmm. Monday, I come by the joint, and he had, I mean, he must have got there three minutes before me because he still got his luggage on his arm, and he's taking off his, his carry-on bag, and, <laughs> and he, undoes his, <laughs> he undoes his jacket. He and he's just up. talking to me casually, and he's like, drops his bag, takes off his jacket, then he takes off his sweater. He had a bird on it. And there's a key tap. There's a key. There's a brick taped to his <laughs> stomach and another key taped to his back. You see? And I'm like, Daddy, what are you doing? He was like, well, you know, I was already on down there under, you know, fake ID. Right. Anyway, and I didn't catch no heat going down there. And if I'd have caught some heat, they'd have, they'd have swiped me on my way down, likely. Ooh, but times are different. Oh, no, you can't do you, you just, Do not get on planes now. Do not go through airport security doing such things in 2022. But, yes, different world, different world, no facial recognition or any of that stuff back then. And so I'm like, so what What happened? He was like, so I was down there. My man was like, we back on. You down here. We can wait for you to send some people back down here to get it popping. Or you can go ahead and, you know, Pops at that time was still a young man. He, you know, he's in his early 40s. He was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, he was in the middle of it. He was getting it in. He was like, no, nah, we ain't got to wait. We can get it popping now. <laughs> I'd, I'll take two back with me now. Wow. And him and Mr. B, that started their run. Um, he eventually would start sending, uh, God rest his soul, Cousin Tony, Cousin, you know, um, and, uh, other family members whose names I won't say. Uh, shout out, cuz. <laughs> Hope she's doing well. No, she's doing well, in fact. Um, and then eventually, of course, that led to me going down to the islands because we used to, back in them days, we would just fly. Mr. He would either meet his people in Miami. Okay. Yeah, you got a question? Yeah, I do got a question. It was uh, at what point did Basil get uh, kidnapped? Okay, so that's going back to this newspaper article, which we will post this article. Our website is being redone. Yeah, we're, we're going to have website. this newspaper article I'm, along I, with all those yeah. other ones. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm a, I might do a hell of a fellas for that one. It, it, it's formally known as the real ones. Uh, the 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 docu series on Basil Miller. Uh, well, not on Basil Miller, but just different different hustlers from the uh, from the past. All right. So according to this newspaper article from the newspapers down there, um, the authorities spent one million one hundred thousand dollars in a three country chase because it seems that it seems Basil. Before he got sentenced, was out on a five hundred thousand dollar bond that he skipped out on. Now, again, family, this is five hundred thousand dollars in 1974 yeah. that is by all math the same as walking five away for five million five million now the government had spent a hundred thousand dollars trying to track him down mm-hmm. basically they spent in today's money a million dollars trying to find him they track him down in the u.s virgin islands um and the legend goes that the agents put a Mickey in his drink. And next thing when he wakes up, he's in Dade County in Miami federal court. As they often will do. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, not to go into that part of the story, when I got, when the DA pulled me off the plane and I'm talking to uh, Basil's lawyer down in Miami, and right. he, he's debriefing me about what just happened. Mm-hmm. And he said, Oh, you only had eighty thousand dollars. Usually, when Mister Miller's friends call me, I have to bail them out from Dade County. But eighty thousand, nah. They said Miami International. This is again truly in the heart of the Miami Vice era. Um. But yeah, that's how that's how they that's what that okay. kidnapping was about. They they gotcha. he's so and now with that article, they able to connect the dots. So he's on the run. Mm-hmm. He's bouncing all around the Caribbean, attempting to af- to avoid. The authorities, right? The authorities have thrown a hundred thousand dollars of money at catching him back then. Okay, they catch up to him in the U.S. Virgin Islands, hit him with a hit him with a Mickey, uh huh. And when he wakes up, he's in Miami. And it was his what? 
it was his daughter. Was it his daughter or his niece that uh, helped you out during your uh, situation? <laughs> so when that incident occurs with me, so Pops had started sending me down there to deliver Mr. B his money. It was really my internship and really, really working for my father. Right. Um, when that thing goes south and the DEA mistake me for dad and they pull me off the plane, mm -hmm. um, take my 9,000, you know, I had $90,000 with me. They take 10. They keep me in detention at Miami International for okay. four hours. Um, so needless to say, first thing I, well, they know I didn't get off the plane in the Bahamas. So right. it was Mr. B who calls my old man and says, I think we got some problems. Your son never made the flight. Okay. Have you heard from him? Pops is like, no, I didn't hear from him. So they were able to put two and two together. They're like, he's been detained. Right. So when, cause <laughs> when I, when I call pops from Miami international, as soon as the DA finally lets me go, first thing he says, they, they just let you go. <laughs> or they, they still holding you. And I was like, no, they let me go. And he was like, all right, go back to your normal hotel. Mm -hmm. And, um, how much we got? Oh, you got, you got about 10 minutes. Um, go back to your normal hotel and our people will get in touch with you. Mm hmm. Mr. B's daughter. Um, oh, okay. So that was it. Okay. Yeah, his yeah. daughter immediately flew up from the Bahamas and um, came and got the bag for me. And actually, that's the last time I ever saw him. Last okay. time I ever spoke to them. Wow. Okay. Of course, they would change my life because then Mr. B would say, "Just start taking the money to New York. I got some bankers who can circle it around through some legitimate methods and get me back my money." Of course, that leads to me moving to New York, and yeah, yeah. and yeah. and the rest, as they say, um, becomes history. But yeah, we'll post that article. Um, yeah, he, he, you know, very much. Yeah. Frank Matthews ran away on a half million dollar bond in seventy two. Mister B is running off on a half million dollar bond. The, the levels of these guys were truly the pioneers of this stuff. And when you guys see the movie Blow. And you hear about, um, in fact, he ended up introducing one of Pop's lieutenants, John the Baptist, to Carlos Leader. Carlos Leader was, of course, a chief lieutenant of Pablo Escobar. But it is not an overstatement to say that this guy, Basil Miller, was one of the architects of that whole thing in Norman's K, uh, that pipeline from the Escobar Medellin cartel through the Bahamas into Miami. Because when you, I remember you telling me you went up up to the island where he was at, and uh, it was very much like that scene, like completely. Uh, did, did, uh, was it was it you told me it was like keys in the water, just so yeah. Um, we just this is maybe my third trip, second or third trip down there, and um, I'm chilling with his son, you know, and th this guy was so famous and respected. You know, down in the islands, when you Black go, Sosa, when you would, when you'd go through like the mall or whatever, people would just be like Basil, Basil, Basil. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, black man handling that kind of bread. Yeah, big time. He was he was in a, a very a league with not a lot of other people. Um, but so his son introduces me to his man. You know, again, back to like we were just talking about brothers down there was getting it. You know, he was our age. I was like twenty twenty one back then. When this is going down, mm -hmm. he introduced him to his man. His man's 21, driving 5 Series BMW down in the Bahamas and shit. And uh, he tells me the story about his mom, who, you know, is old school and would be washing clothes in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And, like, three big garbage bags floated up. And she opens them up. And she thinks, poor woman, she thinks it's dish detergent. And she starts using the stuff in the in the garbage bags to wash clothes from. And when her son sees what she's doing, he's like, what's, what's the problem, mom? Because he don't know exactly what's happening yet. And she says, oh, this detergent is too strong. It's burning holes in the clothes. And he tasted it. He's like, oh, Bob didn't like <laughs> threw away eight bricks. But it was still a whole nother garbage. Yeah, I mean, they were running so much stuff from the Bahamas to South Florida and the DEA and the Coast Guard would hop on, would, would catch the planes or the speed boats or cigarette boats and people would just be dumping 
bags of Yale out of helicopters, out of airplanes, or out of speedboats. To right now, today, in fact, Eddie Jr. was just telling me that in South Florida, used to be people went scavenging, trying to find old Spanish ships full of gold. Right, they're trying to find. Right now, the scavenge is people rent boats and get all kind of equipment in attempt to find that bag, all those Thousands and tens of thousands of bricks that got thrown out of airplanes, speedboats, and helicopters. Ah, uh, but what is too? I'm and, and I and you gotta forgive my ignorance, but after forty years, would would it even? If it was wrapped, if it was wrapped the way they did it, it would still be because they, they 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 purposely, of course, are they're wrapped in in plastic and rubber. Okay, okay, so it's much like coffee. Com- I mean, it, they're airtight sealed. Yeah, big time. And the packages are waterproof. They float to the bottom of the ocean. That's, it's as good today as it was in 1984. Uh, yeah, There's it's, it's some people out there right now going to uh, buy some scuba gear. They do. I'm telling you, it's a big deal down there in the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. The scavenging. It. Yeah, it's again, they're not trying to find the Armada boat from 1500. Right. They're trying to find the Escobar bag from 82. <laughs> Um, so we're going to follow up. We'll keep you guys abreast. I'm really hopeful to get to the islands. We're going to, you know, check the temperature when we catch up with the people down there. Um, but just a fascinating character of all the many people I met through working for my pops. This guy was definitely in a league by himself. Um, highly educated. Um, again, you know, he didn't, he didn't work with the Medellin cartel, second, third person. He was directly, him and Carlos, They he was one of the architects of this whole thing. You go to Miami and you see what the Yale business did for Miami. Um, he played his small part in that happening. Did his thing, big time. Big things. Legend of Mr. B. Legend of Mr. B. Um, so, yeah, yeah, when you can, get get, get that up. On, yeah. um, but definitely got anyway www.bigbossfilmworks.com I don't want to say it too early we got uh, some new technical people we brought onto the team shout out to Olga yeah <laughs> yeah yeah Miss Olga big big ups so uh, we got some really talented people now working on our website and so you guys will be able to go into the archives and see all those newspaper articles about Pops and Eddie their associates newspaper articles about Mr. B really take your time and digest them. And then when you guys got some questions, you can hit us up. Speaking of hitting us up, they need to be doing what? You need to be hitting us up at our Facebook. You need to hit us up at our Instagram, all attached to the name big boss Filmworks. We are also on TikTok. And, uh, if you, if you want to get in touch with us, you can, you know, leave us an email, big boss filmworks at, yahoo.com or big boss filmworks at gmail.com any questions or inquiries yes and please make sure you guys are hitting that like share and subscribe button we approach another milestone don't forget the notification bell and don't forget that if you're in the whip driving you want to check out this content and you but you can't view it um you can go directly to spotify or anchor and yeah. just check out the Motown Mafia podcast. You can ride and hear us chopping up the game. And very soon we will be up on Apple. Coming soon, so it's going down. <laughs>